I'm for it. But look, we have people coming into our country that are looking to do tremendous harm. Exactly one year ago today, I did my best to explore the way Donald Trump answers a question. His use of language in speech, I thought, was fascinating and unique and illuminated why he's so successful at selling a feeling. Now that Trump has been president-elect for 50 days, we don't get to hear much of Trump's speech anymore. His interview appearances are dwindling and his press conferences are non-existent. But that doesn't mean he stopped using and manipulating language. These days, the language that Trump puts on the public record comes largely from writing, specifically from writing on Twitter in 140 character notes. As of December 29th, 2016, Trump has tweeted 221 times as the president-elect. It's important to note at the outset that these tweets come largely from a few sources. Thanks to info from the metadata, we know that of the 221, 153, or 69 percent, come from an Android phone, Trump's personal Samsung Galaxy. 59, or 27 percent, come from an iPhone. And 9, or 4 percent, come from the Twitter web client, as in someone typing the tweets into a computer. A number of commentators and data analysts have surmised that the iPhone tweets are not written by Trump himself, but by his staff. I think that's almost certainly true. If you look at those tweets exclusively, you capture all of the announcements and cabinet picks, as well as the holiday messages and the notes of condolence. Of those 59 tweets, 49 share links or are retweets. And all or almost all of them are likely written by Dan Scavino, Trump's director of social media, or Brad Parscale, a website designer turned high-level staffer who Trump entrusted with tweeting for him during the presidential debates. Of the 153 tweets that come from Trump's personal Samsung, not one shares a link. So that's a good rule of thumb if you want to determine which tweets are from him and which aren't. The huge majority of the Android tweets are Trump's personal thoughts or reactions. And you can split them up in a few ways. For example, 40 of those are positive or congratulatory in tone, 94 are negative or critical in tone, and 19 are pretty much neutral. Like in his speech, one thing Trump is really, really good at is emotionally framing his tweets. And most of them are emotionally charged, which is why 87% of them are negative or positive in tone. Trump doesn't want a sympathetic reader to spend any time at all deciphering how to feel about what he's saying. A lot of people have mocked the way he concludes tweets with one or two word exclamations like sad or too bad. But these punctuations are actually powerful framing devices that lubricate the content of his message. They also reflect a key insight that Trump has, knowingly or unknowingly, about Twitter and texting as a form of communication. While tweets are technically a kind of writing, scholars have long theorized that computer-mediated communication more closely resembles speech than writing, where funky punctuation substitutes for conversational cues. For example, every time you see someone extend a word by adding letters, saying, I'm so sad, or I love Breaking Bad, what they're essentially doing is trying to transmit some emotional content that would have existed in face-to-face -face conversation. Instant messages, text messages, and tweets attract these speech-like qualities, and, and Donald Trump understands this. While he doesn't extend words with extra letters, his punctuations at the end of tweets are extremely speech-like. 51 of his 153 personal personal tweets end with exclamations like this. In 95, there is at least one exclamation point. Whereas opponents and other politicians write through Twitter, Trump speaks through it. Instead of asking us to read, he forces us to hear. But all of this begs the important question, what's the point? Trump is no longer a candidate. He doesn't have to persuade us to vote for him. I mean, you could spend a lot of time looking at a tweet like this from the president-elect of the United States, scratching your head. You could wonder about the message or the distraction it causes or the headlines it generates. But if that's the way you think, this man will always baffle you. Trump doesn't resemble other politicians on Twitter. He resembles the rest of us. He resembles that person you know on Facebook who is posting all the time about how happy they are. These people don't tweet or post because they're trying to relay relevant information. They do it to carefully craft their own identities against some imagined audience that exists only to reinforce what they need to believe. The media and the public act like Trump's tweets contain messages that were meant to receive. 
When the truth is, I think that he's not thinking of us at all. When you look at it through this lens, Trump's Twitter account makes a lot more sense. It makes sense that a lot of his congratulatory tweets are self-congratulatory, and his negative tweets, which account for an astounding majority, are personal in their attacks and sense of victimization. And it makes sense that we should react to it so strongly. We're all in this age of social media intimately familiar with this kind of behavior. We do it ourselves every day. What we're not familiar with, not yet at least, is this kind of thing from the most powerful person in the world. How it will fall out when you hold a position where even your words desperately tweeted into the void have global impact. But give it time, and we will be. There are going to be tons more Nerdwriter episodes in 2017, so if you want to join this crazy thing that I started five years ago, you can click that box right over there and subscribe to this channel, and you'll get all the videos. Um, I really am so excited for next year. I want to level up the show, make content that you have not seen anywhere else on YouTube or the rest of the world. Um, and I'm really excited to, to bring that to you guys. I'm working really hard to do it. I have to thank Crunchyroll for sponsoring this episode. Um, if you really love anime shows, which I do, and you can't find like what you're looking for on Netflix, you can go to Crunchyroll. It's like the Netflix of anime. They have HD episodes, thousands of titles. If something airs in Japan, you can get it an hour later on Crunchyroll. Um, I want to recommend Attack on Titan which is a super, super weird show, but an amazing show, and I think that you'll love it. Um, if you use crunchyroll.com slash nerdwriter, you can get a 30-day free trial and watch that show, and, and let me know what you think in the comments. Um, thank you guys so much. I will see all of you next year. I'm so excited.